Hi folks, I'm Joe with Premier One Supplies and today we're gonna troubleshoot an electric fence and to see why we're not getting the voltage that we want. When you're running an electric fence, you want at least 3000 volts at the end of your fence line. That's enough voltage to deter any predator or contain any animal on your farm. So first, let's make sure that the energizer is turned off. I've got my button off. Yep, not hearing any clicking. Next, I'm going to disconnect the fence. And we've already determined that the fence energizer is not the issue. There's another video on troubleshooting fence energizer issues that we'll link to in the video. So next we're gonna go through the fence and figure out why am I not having adequate voltage? And here's a quick thing, or a quick point. I've accidentally tucked the end clip of my fence into this woven wire here. It kept it out of the way, but it also created a dead short to the ground. So by, so make sure that your fence is not touching anything metal. So it could be an existing fence, it could be a T-post as a corner post, or it could be a barn that you're up against. So that's one point, is make sure that your fence is not touching anything metal or anything conductive. Uh, wood posts, after a rain, they're a little moist. That acts as a direct uh, short to ground. So double check for that too. Here I have a broken conductor strand that was in contact with the ground. So the conductor strand contacting the ground will create a direct short and complete the fence circuit rather than you or an animal completing the circuit. So what we're going to do is repair that break. And we have a video on our website or on our channel on how to repair net or uh, conductor breaks on your fences. So watch that for that. And we'll go to the next step. It's not often on the farm that you hear the phrase, I have too much grass, but in this case we do. My conductors are contact in contact with all the grass in front of me. So the tall blades and the lower blades beneath are all in contact with the conductors. And each blade of grass, it's not that conductive, but it takes a little bit of energy from your fence. And as you can see, all those little bits add to something big. So what we're going to do is either mow, trample, or weed whack this area to bring the grass contact down so it's not seeping energy from the fence. Sometimes one of the lower electrical strands will get caught under the spike, creating a dead short to the ground. So what you need to do is unloop that and reset the fence. Sometimes you need to make a corner in your field and this works, but it really doesn't. This will short out your fence. So use an insulated fence post like this fiber tuff. Position your fiber tuff so it's on the inside of the corner and I like to place my foot plate on the inside as well. That way any tension from the fence is pushing against that foot plate, which gives added stability. And also double check to make sure this bottom strand did not get caught underneath, which would touch the foot plate and short out the fence. John. How many rolls did we run? Eight. What size energizer is this? It's a 60. That's a 0.6 joules. That's, that's not enough for eight rolls a net. It's possible to have more fence than what your energizer can power adequately. So what you can do is run less fence based on the output of the energizer or have a higher output unit. I brought out a solar IntelliShock 180 so I can power my eight rolls of fence plus a few more if I need to. And I'll take my solar IntelliShock 60 and run it on a shorter fence line elsewhere. The problems we encounter today are the most common. They're not every possible problem but you'll, that you'll encounter, but they're the ones we handle on the phones most frequently. So if you have any questions, give us a call at 800-282-6631 or visit our website at premieronesupplies.com. Happy grazing. <laughs>